Hi everyone, my name's Kashmi and I work with the social media team here at CSIRO. As you know, we are hard at work at tackling the current COVID-19 pandemic. So whether that's undertaking preclinical trials at our Australian Centre for Disease Preparedness for the two vaccine candidates, or even creating proteins for the University of Queensland's vaccine candidate, or even just studying the virus more closely to better understand its characteristics, our scientists are very much hard at work. And this includes Dr. Dennis Bauer. So Dr. Dennis Bauer has kindly joined us today to talk about her research, how that relates to COVID-19, and also her journey and how she arrived to a career in STEM. So Dr. Dennis, how are you? Thank you, I'm fine. Thank you for having me. Of course, no, thank you so much for joining us. We're so happy to have you here. So I'll start off with an easy question. What is your role at CSIRO? <laughs> yes, so I'm a group leader in the eHealth Research Programme, which is a, um, CSIRO's digital health initiative and Australia's largest digital health research programme. In fact, it's worldwide quite unique in covering the full value chain between basic research, genomics, all the way up to delivering something into the healthcare practice. So what does your research focus on? My group focuses on genomics and life science at large. So we develop specifically big data technology, cloud-based machine learning technology in order to get really the insights of those unprecedented data sets and um, you know, help extract the value for the healthcare system. Oh, cool. So essentially you use technology to kind of solve really abstract and complex health problems in a way? Yeah, that's right. So technology is that... You know, just a couple of years ago, we were seeming impossible, but really using the latest in cloud technologies and algorithmic development to basically solve the unsolvable. Crazy. So I guess in that case, how are you looking at COVID-19? Yeah, so our research has focused on the genomics of the virus. So with information of the genome from the virus around the world, it is quite interesting that it accumulates mutations or it can accumulate mutations and therefore using that kind of information to make the virus testing more robust and get insights from there is basically our role. So identifying what kind of isolate should be used in order to test the virus again. So you're, use, you're using your technology to better understand the COVID-19, um, SARS-CoV-2, the virus that's causing COVID-19. Yeah, especially with the genome. Like the genome has so much information encoded in there in fact, it, it um, holds its blueprint, basically, so its building plan. And in there, there are information like, for example, when it replicates, typically RNA viruses, they just roughly replicate themselves. Whereas the uh, SARS-CoV-2 virus, it replicates, or coronavirus in general, they replicate themselves with a proofreading mechanism. So the copy of itself um, is of higher quality, if you want, than typically RNA viruses would be. Let's go to your technology. How long does it take for your technology to look at the virus's genome? Yeah, the virus is actually quite large. So the coronaviruses, they're generally you know, 30,000 base sets long, and typically RNA viruses are only 9,000 base, 9, base sets long. So all the technologies that were developed in that space are geared towards those smaller kind of viruses and struggle really with this particular one, especially since the data sets have grown so much with now 20,000 of them, 20,000 isolates being available around the world. Whereas our technology has come from a human space where we look at 3 billion letters regularly, and therefore we build scalable technologies. So analyzing uh, you know, that kind of data set is fairly straightforward in quotes for the technologies that we're developing. So we can do analysis in a couple of minutes that typically would take days to analyze. That's awesome. Um, so I guess, how, will your research help with our understanding of the current pandemic? Yeah, so in the, um, the virus at the moment, there's so many mutations in there that we don't really understand what they're actually doing because the clinical data is missing. So hopefully with that data becoming available relatively soon, we can answer questions like, is there a more virulent strain um, in, in the outbreak that, that clinicians should be paying more attention to? Now, all of this is uh, currently not really possible because as I said, the data is not there. 
but where yeah. the data is, is the genome itself. So therefore, we can be doing things like molecular tracing, which is an interesting approach of using the genome in order to trace back where an individual might have picked up the virus, akin oh. to contact tracing. Cool. Okay. Um, for those who don't know, that includes me. What is molecular tracing? Yeah, so getting a bit more technical here, in that molecular tracing, you can sort of think of taking the fingerprint of the virus. So looking at the genome and all its mutation that it has accumulated really identified it quite, or can identify it quite uniquely. And just like a fingerprint on a crime scene, uh, which you can then compare to a list of suspects, you can do the same thing with the virus. So a patient taking the virus signature of a patient, we can then compare it to all the other um, isolates that were in Australia or even around the world in order to find the one that is closest to it and therefore can likely pinpoint the, you know, the source of the infection or where that patient had picked up the infection. Wow, that is such a crazy, like it's like a database almost, right? Pretty much. Did you always want to be a scientist? And I guess what was your pathway from when you, were when you first figured out that you wanted to be a scientist to where you are now? Yeah, I think as a child, it sort of it didn't it didn't register that this is what scientists would do. I mean, I was quite fortunate in have computers and programming all around me when I was a child. So therefore, turning a childhood hobby into a profession that also helps people, like in the medical field, is is really quite rewarding to me. That's awesome. So, what advice would you give to budding STEM scientists or scientists looking to enter the field of STEM? STEM and bioinformatics specifically is an interesting field in that it keeps reinventing itself. So therefore, people that join in late or come in new, they, they're not really at a disadvantage. They can leapfrog old technology and jump straight into with using the very latest of technologies and be as impactful as established researchers by you know, just doing that. So from my perspective, I'd say just come along and give it a go.